Hi and welcome back to Free DU Hub. As you know, we are covering a course on network security and penetration testing, and we have recently uploaded our lectures on sniffers. So we'll try to see how sniffers work on Windows. For, for that, we'll be using two tools, which are Winta, a free utility, and the other one is Wireshark. Uh, so we'll be covering some exercises on that, and we'll try to see that how the packets are captured. First of all, if we talk about uh, Windom, you can download it from the website of Windom, and uh, the link is uh, right here. Uh, you can simply click on it and uh, download the software. Now, it's a free utility. It used to work on Windows, uh, available for Windows 95, 98 onwards, but still it's working on Windows uh, 10 as well. Uh, you can download it, save it on your computer, make sure your antivirus is not blocking it because most of the antivirus software detect it as a threat, so they automatically delete it. In order to run this application, uh, you must have WinPCAP installed on your computer. You can click on the installer button over here and download it as well. So before running WinDump, you must have installed it on your computer. Now in order to use WinDump, what you'll have to do is that if you will download it simply, as you can see, I have downloaded it on my computer and if you directly double click on it, it won't work. So that's the error message that you'll get because we have not installed the plugin uh, which we were talking about and it is our WinPCAP file. So we have downloaded it, we'll install it and it would work after that. But before installing WinPCAP, make sure that you don't have any previous version of uh, PCAP installed on your computer. Like if you're using any other software like Nmap, it might have installed NPCAP. So install it first before using this one. Since it's an old utility, it requires an older version of WinPCAP. So we'll install it on our computer. And once it's done, now we'll try to execute it. Now, as you can see that it's showing us only this thing and we cannot do anything on it. Uh, we cannot type anything. We cannot do the rest of the things. It started just collecting the dumps of the computer, but we don't know what it's doing actually. So in order to stop that, you'll have to press Control C. It will stop it and we would run it through command prompt. So in order to do that, we'll right click on our desktop, create a shortcut for our CMD and we'll type CMD and press enter. It's asking you to name it. You can name it as cmd.exe and press enter. Now, as you can see, it's on our desktop. You can right click on it and run as administrator. Now we have it here. We'll have to browse to the file where we have copied it as I have saved it in my C drive in VDOM. So we'll type in CD double dot just to be back on the C drive. Then we'll type CD wind dump. So we are in the directory. Now we'll type in wind dump again since that's the file inside. Now you can see that it's still behaving the same. So we'll press Control C to cancel it. And now we'll use windup minus D. If you want to retype the same command that you were using before, you will just press the up arrow key again and it will show you the command that we typed earlier. So uh, we'll type windup minus D. It would list all the active interfaces that I have on my computer. As you can see, I have different interfaces on my computer, which are the active NIC port. Some are disabled, some are active, some are for virtual box and VMware. But I'm using the one which is here for the Wi-Fi activity. So here, if you look at it, it will tell you that uh, it's a Microsoft, then Oracle, VMware, or the Microsoft one. So most probably either it's number five or number one. So we'll have to check that. And then we'll have to select it to capture the packets on it. So in order to check the interfaces, we'll type window minus i minus i and then I'll type the interface number one for example to check if it can capture any packets on it. If I'll press enter, 
it couldn't capture any packet. So we press Control C to cancel it. And now I'll type number five, which is the last one and it should work. So minus I means interface number five. So now it has selected interface number five and it's trying to capture some packets on it. Now we'll press Control C to cancel it. As you can see, it has captured 93 packets and 793 packets received by the filter and zero packets were dropped by the kernel. Now, if we would like to capture packets on a specific port, what we'll do is we'll select the same command as windup minus i, which is the interface number five, and then we'll type in port 80 and then press enter. So now it would capture all packets on port 80 on this interface. And now as you can see, it has captured some packets since I was trying to browse something and uh, it took a note of everything like 47 packets are captured. And uh, now what we'll do is we'll try to save this capture to a PCAP file. Now, as you can see that we are capturing the packets, but there should be a way in order to save these packets to a directory where we can open it either on Notepad++. I'll show you how the feedback would appear in that. Or if we'll open it in Wireshark, what would be the result of it? So in order to write the capture to a file, we'll write one window minus I for the interface number five, and then we'll write minus W to write it to a file, and we'll give it a name as C on C drive on Windom in the directory, and then we'll name it as capture 01.pcap file, which could be read by Wireshark as well and then press enter. But before pressing enter, you can go in your C drive and you can see that there is no file created as capture 01 as we are typing it over here. But once we'll press enter, you'll see that a file would be created and it would try to capture the packets in that capture 01 file. And we have stopped the capture. You can see that it has captured 828 packets. If we we'll refresh it, now you can see the size has been changed to 82K. If I'll open it on Notepad++, we can see that it's all garbage. You cannot understand anything other than a few commands, which are HTTP 1.1. If I'll open it in Wireshark, we'll be able to read the contents of the PCAP file, but we can read it using Windom as well. In order to do that, uh, what we'll do is we'll go to the same path, but instead of minus W, which is for writing, we'll change it to minus R in order to read the contents of the file, which is capture 01. So once uh, we'll write the command, just press enter and it would read the contents of the PCAP file and it would show you over here. As you can see, the contents are appearing. Now let's try to open this capture file on Wireshark. As you can see, we are in the C directory and we'll open the capture file and here you can see the contents of the same capture that we recently conducted on our network. So that's how you can use Wireshark in order to read the contents of it. That's it as far as Windump is concerned. Now we'll be talking about Wireshark which is an open source program available in order to capture the packets on the network. For that, you'll have to click on download and uh, you can install either the 32-bit or 64-bit uh, version depending on your architecture of the computer or you can install the portable application uh, which won't require any installation. I would highly recommend that if you are running the portable version of it, you must have NPCAP installed on your computer. I'll leave the links in the description so that you can download the files from there and install it on your computer. So let's try to use uh, Wireshark and see how can we use it. 
Now once you'll open Wireshark, you'll see this interface and in order to select or start capturing the traffic on your network, you'd have to select the active interface on your computer. Now, as you can see that it's showing that this connection is live and having some communication on it. So that's our active interface. We'll double click on it and it will start capturing the packets as you can see over here. Let's prop the packet capture. If we want to start the packet capture, we'll click on this blue icon and it will start capturing the packets. Now, as you can see that there are lots of packets which are received over here or it has captured from the network. If you click on it, you can get some details about that package, like the interface of it that it has selected exactly like what we saw in Vinta. Then it would show us the encapsulation type, Ethernet 1, arrival time, time shift, uh, frame length, and uh, capture length, etc. Now this information is usually used when someone is launching a SYN attack on your network, which we call denial of service as well. Now, all these packets, their sequence numbers and etc. can be found for any address. As you can see, the TP link and its MAC address is there. Then the interfaces, uh, their version, segments, and the transmission control protocol having different ports. And uh, if uh, you can, uh, you want to find out the sequence number, it's all appearing over here. Now, since it was a sequence acknowledgement analysis by a TCP payload of 1460 bytes, you can find all relevant information available here. Now, most of the hackers, if they want to launch an attack on any computer, a an attack or anything like that, they'll capture the packet, they'll find out the sequence number and the packet size and all those relevant details from here, and then they launch the attack on the specific computers. Now, if you can see over here, it has highlighted certain things. You can change the highlighting on yourself, like it's saying that it's doing an acknowledgement on it and the uh, rest of the information. Now, for example, uh, we want to start the capture again and we would like to capture specific data. Uh, we'll have to uh, search it by typing anything in the filter over here. So let's start the capture and then we'll try to find some more information about it. Now, if you'll start to capture again, it would ask you that if you want to save it or you want to continue it without saving for the testing purposes, we just click on continue without saving so that we'll see what we'll uh, get in the next output. As you can see, it's capturing and it's highlighting certain things in black, which requires some attention. So you can capture the packets and later you can check them. Uh, in my other window, if I'll open some websites like eBay and uh, we'll see if it can capture anything from there. And then we'll try to read the packets and we'll try to understand what's going on on there. Okay, now we have stopped the capture over here. And now we'll try to analyze the uh, data that we have uh, captured over here. Uh, if we'll click on this button, it won't highlight anything and it will simply capture the packets. But in this way, you won't be able to understand that what thing is important and what thing you can simply ignore. So you can click on it to have all the highlighting back. And once it's, uh, it was capturing the packets, you can click on this icon for auto scroll, like it would keep on showing you the latest packets. Or if you're just patching, uh, capturing the packets and you don't want to see what's going on, uh, you can simply switch it off. I prefer keeping it on. Now in this capture, for example, I would like to find all TCP traffic. So I'll simply type in TCP and press enter. It would show me all TCP communications. If you're typing in a command and it's appearing in green, it means that the command is valid and there is some data relevant to that. Now, if I want to see UDP uh, packets, I'll simply type UDP and it would show me all the packets which are related to UDP. Now, as you can see, we have all these packets over here. If we type uh, TCP uh, contains and then uh, we want to find a website, for example, Microsoft. 
it turned green it means that it found some data and if we press on it it would show us all the communication on microsoft website if you want to find the results related to udp contains outlook and press enter it will show you all communication on udp for for outlook now if you would like to find a specific ip address we'll type in ip.addr and then space two equal signs and then we'll give an ip address for example this one which is 52.98.32.2 it turns green it means that it found some packets on that press enter and it would sort the packets and would show us only the packets which are received by that IP address. If it's a unsafe communication, you can uh, like Telnet or anything where clear text passwords travel over the network, you can click on it and you can browse the contents of that packet and you can simply get the username and password once you capture it if someone is communicating on that. If you want to, uh, don't want to type this address over and over again and you want to save it, you can simply click on plus sign over here. You can name it as the IP address which is here or type suspicious and press OK. It would have it over here. So if we we'll remove the address and if we we'll click on this address again, it would show us all the packets which are coming from that specific address. If you want to get rid of it, simply right click on it and remove the filter. If you remove it here and press enter, you'll get all the packets again. Now, if you want to follow a stream, you can right click on it or if you want to filter the results, you'll select the thing as selected and it will do the same thing as we wrote it earlier that where the IP address source equals this thing. So it would filter the packets accordingly. Now you can remove it again, press enter and you can click on any of the communication which took place, right click on it and you can find lots of options like prepare filter, selected and then categorize, follow and follow the TCP stream. So it would show you all the contents of it. Of course, you can't understand it over here because it's an encrypted communication. So that's how we use it in order to capture the, capture the packets on Wireshark. Now we have all these communications and if you focus, it's talking about the communication port, the protocol of it, as well as the length of it and the sequence number. For example, it's communicating on port number 443 uh, through a port 60,667. If we would like to find out those details, there is an excellent utility called curl ports. You can download it here from this website. What it does is that it would list all the processes which are running on your computer on a specific port. As you can see, I just started the program and it's listening to all the communication which is taking place on my computer. The local address process, the remote address, uh, the host name and other things which are related to the applications which are installed on this specific computer. And then you can get all the other details like description, version, process, who's the publisher, when it was added and all those details. So if you find a service which is uh, a bit suspicious, you can simply right click on it on this communication and you can kill the process from here. You can re remove it or kill the process on a selected port, close the TCP communication. If you want to find a specific port on which it's communicating, for example, if you try to search for the Chrome communication on this computer, it's taking place on 63,423. If we'll search on it, it would find that specific communication it has highlighted and if we'll right click on it and we can kill the process on the selected port so it will close it from there.
If we want to check it on our computer, you can click start and type the sources monitor. It would also give you the details for the uh, things which are taking place on your computer, on TCP and the ports and rest of the activities on your computer. So that's how we try to find out all the information about the packets and what's going on on your network. Hope it was helpful and uh, hope to see you again on some other video. Thank you very much.